Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Spark Video as a teaching and learning tool in school. I think you're going to find the whole Spark suite from Adobe to be really useful in school for lots of reasons, not least because there are two or three apps that you might want to use that all fit together and can be used together. And really important in school on a tight budget, all of this is free. So let's get started. This is the laptop version. If you are going to be setting up accounts for students, and I recommend that you do set up individual accounts for students rather than having one general account. If you use the Adobe VIP program, again, it's still free to, it's still free to become a part of, and it's much easier to manage student accounts, and you should be able to just hand off the task of setting up a VIP program for your school and to managing the accounts. That should all be done by your IT department or your IT provider. If you're a school that uses Google and has Google Classroom, for example, then it becomes even easier because you can link the existing Google accounts to the Adobe Spark account. It's a bit of setting up once you've started, but once you've set them up, students should be able to log on just as easily as they do on a laptop or on any of the online apps that you use, like the reading apps and the maths apps. We're going to create a new something, and it's going to be a video here. You will see that this has got lots of options that look like social media. That's because this is actually designed to create things to go onto social media. It's not designed to load directly onto social media. So the way we're kind of hacking the idea or you reworking the facilities that Adobe are giving us is we're creating videos that are then just used internally in school as teaching and learning videos. So we're going to create a new video. And why don't we give it a title? We're going to imagine that this video is being created by, let's say, a year two, maybe, or probably more likely a year three. And it's taking some content from their non-chronological report about the Stone Age. So that's the, the conceit of what we're doing now. So we shall call this Stone Age. And then it will start to create things. You do get a lot of templates. I would really highly recommend that you do not use the templates. The templates dictate to the pupils or make very strong suggestions as to how they should structure their videos. And that I think is a really bad idea. They need the freedom to create their own. So we're going to click on start from scratch. And then it'll take a little while to go. As it's getting taken a little while to go, I will explain that Adobe Spark Video is a combination between what you would expect from, I'll just shut down the tutorial video, what you'd expect from a PowerPoint presentation and a video. So it's a hybrid between the two. It's video presentation software to give it its kind of probably most accurate description. The beauty of it is you don't need to edit the videos that you've made. Uh, it sort of organises and produces the videos in a much more straightforward way. The price you pay for that is that it's not as flexible as, for example, using iMovie to create a video, but it's a lot more accessible and it can be done with just one pupil sitting with a uh, laptop or an iPad or a couple of pupils working together. So we are going to, this is a suggestion that I make, which is the first slide, which is a kind of titles or the opening titles of their videos should always be an icon. An icon can animate, which the, obviously the photos can't, or you'll see the photos can't. They animate and on top of being uh, animated, they look like titles because they're drawings. So when they say icons, they mean drawings. So we're gonna choose an icon. In the right hand side now, you can see it says find an icon. Let's just see if we can find a Stone Age icon. Let's spell it right for a start. And we will see, depending on how specific the search is, it can be very difficult to find the correct or the, a suitable icon. So sometimes the pupils have to think a bit more clever about it, as if they're thinking about hope uh, for PSHE or something like that, or something more abstract, it can be a real issue. But here we've got quite a good looking Stone Age uh, tool. It's a tool for hunting with, but it's still a tool. So that's going to appear in there, hopefully. 
why is this not working? Let's try this one. There we go, it's working. I don't know why it decided I didn't like that one. Uh, so good, we're going. And then what we might do is actually put some proper titles on there. So layout up in the top. Layout is for each individual slide. Theme affects all slides. So if you look here, we have, it's gonna move me out of the way if I possibly can. There we go, move me out a little bit more out of the way. We have full screen, which is what we have now, split screen in two halves, a caption and title and text. Title and text does not work with icons. If you have a photo on there, you can use title and text, but title and text tends to be very presentation, very PowerPoint heading and then what you're gonna talk about. So actually what we probably want is a caption. So we're gonna change it to caption style. And that will give us the option of, there we go, putting some text in. Or should we have the Stone Age? That sounds a bit better, doesn't it? The Stone Age. This is a, I would suggest that every student, when they create a video, starts with an icon with a title and then they do what they should do with every video. They describe what is going to happen in the video. This is an introduction to the video. They introduce what the video is about. And now we're ready to record our voiceover. So this is a series of video slides with voiceovers and the content of their slides is usually photographs. It can be video as well, but that's a bit more advanced normally photographs and or these icons. So we're gonna press the record button. We're gonna to attempt to record our voice on this now. Hi there, in this video, we're gonna tell you all about the Stone Age. And then if you make an error, or the students make an error, they can record it again and again. Actually, actually, because I said this was, a, the reason why I said this was a year three one is that maybe instead of Produce, reproducing their entire uh, non-chronological report. We might get them engaged the first time to say, give us your top three facts. So uh, we're, we're gonna make it like that actually. So this is how you re-record. Just push the button again. Notice that the button needs to be pushed down all the time. So my finger is on the mouse holding the button down while I'm recording and you'll see it highlight and then you'll see me take my finger off it. Hi there, in this video, I'm gonna tell you my favorite three facts about the Stone Age. This is something pupils will do and you need to train them, especially year threes and fours. They will push the button. They will start speaking and before they have finished, they will take their finger off. It's a way that the hands, eyes and brains of humans work is that they think they're taking their finger off the button after they finish speaking, but they haven't. And I will guarantee that even if you explain this really clearly and get pupils to practice it, it's not unusual for 80% of the students to mess up their first attempt at recording. And if they do get the first one right, before the end of the video, 80% of them will have made an error where they take their finger off and they won't have realized. So now we've got our first There we go, and it's appearing. We're probably not gonna hear me speaking. If I turn on my desktop audio, we might be able to hear it, let's see. Oh, desktop audio is on. My recording program might not let you hear my voice. And I don't think it is, no, there we go. I think because it switched to uh, come out of a, another speaker somewhere. So you're not going to hear my voice on this, but I will show you, I will share you the video when it's finished and you can see how long my voice has gone on there. So now we need to create a second slide. The second slide is down in the left hand corner. You can see the mouse moving. There is an add button. So we had a second slide. In this one, we are going to create a photo. This is where it gets really important that you get the pupils to think about the visuals. This is part of the reason behind using this. They're trying to communicate with stu with other students and maybe with their parents, with the rest of the school, using another medium other than just writing. So now they're going to speak and they're going to use visual cues to back up what they're saying. I'm just gonna go 
back a few steps because what you have here is all of the options. You can find free photos, which I'll go into. Adobe Stock is a paid for uh, feature, so we probably won't be using that. Creative Cloud, which I have, is there because I pay £25 a month and you would be paying that per head for students. Like, we're not going there. Same with Lightroom. Dropbox, I imagine you're not going to use. Google Photos, you may use, but I wouldn't recommend it. Google Drive may be something. If students have produced work on Google Drive, you might want to download photographs straight from their Google Drive or from their Google Classroom. Because of course, if you're using Google Classroom, all of their work is there on the drive. So they may have photographs that they've created. And I'm going to show you another feature on the uh, iPad shortly. But we're going to upload, up, we're going to, Sorry, we are oh, upload a photo. Sorry, if you have anything on the computer or the laptop, you can upload a photo directly as well. But we're not going to do that either. That can be a bit long winded sometimes with students saving photographs and uploading them. We are going to find free photos. This is another reason why this is brilliant. You can do this with some Google features, but what you can do, which is beautiful on uh, Adobe, is they have free copyright permissioned photographs so all of these photographs they have purchased the rights to use them so you can use any of these and not worry about getting some kind of copyright claim and if your students are producing brilliant work you may well be want to put it put this on youtube so let's have a look is that some stone age people kind of stone age people not sure if i like that uh as i said sometimes stone age cave um, uh Let's try Stone Age, Stone Age people. So you see now their search becomes really important. No, they've just searching for people there. Uh, let's try uh, Neolithic, shall we? So that's using some of their keywords to search around. Uh, as wall paintings, but we were going to look at that. There's a oh, there's a big kind of stone there actually, and oh look, there's a there's a stone henge there of some description. So you can see how searching around the word, especially when they're using abstracts, in other work, they may be looking at abstract concepts like happiness or joy. Maybe they didn't work on bullying, which I know I made a video about last year. And now we're getting ready to our first fact. Our first fact is why it's called the Stone Age. Let's have a go then. Fact number one, the Stone Age is called the Stone Age because the people... Let's try again. Remember, you can, we can revisit it again and again. My first fun fact is that the reason why it's called the Stone Age is because people use stones for tools and for hunting. Job done. Now we're going to look at another image, and this is a perfect example of how we may wish to think a little bit more abstractly about the images. I'm going to do something about caves. So again, add. photo and I want to say that people lived in caves will we get a stone age cave shall we see we may or may not stone age cave and we do not now you may have photos of caves that you're already using so maybe you can use those maybe they've created caves in art so they could use those and I'll show you how to do that on our next slide but for now we just have pictures of caves. That doesn't, that doesn't look very hospitable, does it? That looks a bit more hospitable. That's quite a nice view for somebody who lives in a cave, isn't it? So we may have that one. We'll live with that one, I think. So it is now uploading it and it is ready to go. So this is our next slide. My second fact is that in the, start again. My second fact is that Stone Age people lived in caves. I know that was an early Stone Age fact rather than Neolithic, but I think pupils are fascinated by the idea of living in caves. Now we're going to move across from the version that we've just looked at onto the iPad version. So here we are with the iPad now opened up. As you can see, the iPad actually has the video we've just been working at is constantly being updated on the iPad at the moment and it's the second one from the top that says Stone Age. 
unfortunately, because I'm using the latest web version of the Video Maker, and this is a really old iPad, I can't transfer between the two. As long as you've got a reasonably modern iPad, and I am talking about I've got like an iPad 4 or something here, like the one of the very early iPads that you probably don't have in school, I can't move the videos from the computer to the iPad. I can probably do it the other way around, I'm not sure. That shouldn't be an issue in school, but if you do have Chromebooks and new iPads, you will easily swap between the two. If you don't, if you've got really old iPads, you may have an issue. It just means you can only use the iPads and you can't swap between the two. So what I've done is I've created a Stone Age 2 that looks pretty similar, but the important thing that you can see here is the layout is pretty much the same. The slides are along the bottom, the video slide that you're going to be working on is in front of you. You can play it to see what is happening. And then we are going to create a new slide like this. And there's a new slide and it's in the wrong place. So I'm going to pick it up and move it to where it needs to be, which is there. And then here, what we're going to add is a photo, but this is where things are going to be slightly different. Instead of creating, of taking a photo from the My Free Photos stock of photos, which remember are free. I could have a photograph on the iPad that maybe has been taken before. So for example, if it's a science experiment, it could be photographs or even videos that have been taken during the experiment that are then put into the new Spark video. But also if it's something where you want to find the videos and use the videos whilst you're making the Spark video video, want a better word, uh, on the bottom left hand side on the uh, set of options you have take picture. So we click on take picture and then what we have here is a beautiful set of what looks what looks like, I don't know if it is, but it looks like it's Stone Age jewellery. I'm going to take a photograph of that. So that could be something that is in school for example, uh, on the art board or something like that or in the uh, that pupils have made as homework and then we can either retake it or we can use the photograph. I am going to use it and it should insert it for me. There we go and we may even be able to resize this one. A good reason for using this one is to resize it. There we go so between the cherubs or the uh, I think that's a fairy at the bottom there. There's some uh, there are some shells hanging down. Let's pretend that's some jewellery that's been made. So now I will again push the button and this time this is all a touch screen, don't forget. I will push the button and I will record my third fact. In Stone Age times, the people made jewellery out of sticks, stones and shells. Which apparently is a Stone Age fact, I'm sure I read that somewhere. So now our video is nearly finished, we've got the beginning says what the video is about. We've inserted an icon to create a title slide and introduce the video. We've had in this case our three facts. They could be all the separate paragraphs in a non-chronological report. They could be the different sections in a biography. They could be the various stages of a science experiment. So you can see how this sim simple format can be used in lots of uh, subject areas within school. The last thing that pupils should always do is round off their video. The more sophisticated they get, the cleverer the final video slide is, but at the very least they should be capable of saying goodbye at the end. Uh, so we're going to create a, we're going to move from, there we go, we're going to move from the uh, first, from the iPad and we're going to go back to the video that we're working on on the laptop. Add a new slide. This slide is going to say goodbye, so they need to think about how they do that. How do they say goodbye? Could be an icon, could be a photograph. Quite often they get into like uh, the cleverer they get at making videos. They'll do something like this. What's that one look like? Is that somebody waving? There's somebody waving there. There's a flag waving there. What's that there? That's somebody waving, there we go, we'll have that. So they start to get quite clever and, and playful, especially with the beginnings and the ends. Uh, and especially if it's a more uh, abstract video, but that's somebody waving, but it could be, it could have been another Stone Age artifact. And they're gonna round off the video. The very least, it should be a goodbye, maybe a thank you, and a restatement of what 
the video is about and I gave you that in reverse order. So it should be my video is about thanks for watching, goodbye. Uh, and it's a really important part of their uh, communication skills is to know that you introduce what you're going to say and you round off what you're going to say and that is good for communication and it's a and it's an essential part of how media works so let's say goodbye here we go so those are my top three favorite facts about the stone age thanks for watching bye and there we have it so this is it this is the video with all the slides in there and it's ready to go now, it's ready to be saved, but we can do a final bit of tinkering as well. We talked about the layout and I've brought the layout up here. We have obviously full screen, split screen captions, title and text. So we convert this to title and text, for example. We can put a text in here. That's better, I think. Is that we spell jewellery? I think it is. We can move this around. And we can, you saw how the captions worked. In this, we could have, uh, we can add a title and some uh, additional text. But watch what I'm doing here. I wanted to show you this. Be careful because the pupils will decide to virtually write what they are saying. They are now producing far too many words in the video and some pupils will just want to write down everything and say nothing or write down everything and say everything. It is too much information. They are not producing a written assignment. They are producing a media assignment. So do be aware of the, the fact that some pupils will need some guidance in using the media as a spoken medium yeah so i would be pulling up students for writing even this much and actually that's a minimum compared to what some pupils will will produce uh, we saw how captions work captions are very good because they just give you one line of text there was a title and text split screen if we split the screen it gives you the option then of having a photograph on one side and text on the other or two photographs for comparative uh, before and afters, for example, in science, but we shall go back to full screen. There we go, and it seems to have got rid of some of the words. And we also have theme. Theme will give you different colours uh, for backgrounds. If you are using, for example, the icons, it will also give you different colour schemes and the font and the way that the icons animate will all be different. So I'm looking here and I'm thinking maybe this one. Let's take a look. So it's got mountains on it. Let's have a look at the first one. That's looking a bit more stony, isn't it? A uh, bit too pink. So you can see how it's changing the colours. Kind of, I quite like that one. That's kind of slaty hint of green in there. So it doesn't imply that everything was some kind of barren desert. So you can see how then students, by choosing the colours and choosing the layout, can start making some informed decisions of how they're going to visually represent what they're talking about. And especially by year and five and six, they should be capable of making those kind of relatively sophisticated communication decisions that are beyond just what they write and the grammar and the register that they use in their written work. And finally, music. We have a large range of music and it will play the various versions. You will hear those and I will choose maybe Western Sage for now. Uh, and. I will choose the music to go with the video and the video that you see at the end. And now it's ready. Or we can turn the music on and off. And we can also make the music louder and quieter. Be careful the pupil don't crank the music right up so you can't hear them speak. Now we're back on the iPad. We're going to quickly look at how to save and share the videos that we've made. Uh, look in the top right hand corner, you will see a square with an arrow coming out of it. That is the icon for sharing and saving. You can ignore all the things about Facebook and uh, Twitter. It's probably like highly likely that you don't have any of those on your school iPads anyway, so we can ignore those. But what you are going to probably want to do is save your video to the camera roll. Whatever you do, make sure that the students don't shut down the app or 
put close the cover on the iPad whilst this process is happening otherwise it won't save to a video that way you've got a video that can then be uploaded to Google Classroom or Google Drive it can be put on the school drive school servers and be basically stored and used and played on any device now we're going to come out of there and come back onto the laptop because there are a few more options that I'll show you on the laptop if you're on a laptop you can do the same thing but the option is not safe to camera roll but as you can see as I wiggle the mouse download and that will download it onto the Chromebook or laptop and then you can upload it to Google Classroom you can hit the share button and the share, what the share button will or should give you an option to do if you're within the VIP ecosystem and you've got Google Classroom is you can share any of the output from Spark with Google Classroom which make it, makes it really useful if you're a Google Classroom user for both sharing web pages and videos that you want to share with students and getting students to share them and store them as work within the classroom and you can put as part of that would be publishing it notice here where it says get noticed and being featured on the Adobe Spark website etc that is turned off and there is a setting that you can set for each account that means that the output that the pupils produce will be unsearchable and unfindable and it's a good idea to turn all that off anyway just for GDPR and the search like and then you're very much within a walled garden where you're using the internet but you're not part of the internet shall we put it that way and the only thing left to do is to play out with the video that we made as part of this tutorial so thanks for watching hi there in this video I'm going to tell you my favorite three facts about the stone age my first fun fact is that the reason why it's called the stone age is because people use stones for tools and for hunting my second fact is that Stone Age people lived in caves. My third fact is that in Stone Age days people used to make jewellery out of stones and shells and sticks. So those are my top three favourite facts about the Stone Age. Thanks for watching. Bye.